Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and this one's a lot of fun. It's with Chris and Ernie from Panther City Barbecue in Fort Worth, Texas. I spoke to them about three years ago, so I wanted to do a catch-up interview because a lot has changed with them. They've grown so much, so I wanted to get the scoop on all the different things on, on their pit room and their new pits and the bar that they acquired next door. So they now have a bar that's open seven days a week and they have an inside area to eat as well as an outside area to eat. So they talk about all of that and I say they, they it's, it's pretty much Chris talking. Uh, Ernie is there the whole time, but it's Chris talking and it is so wonderful. It's so great. I knew their menu was extensive, but he goes over the menu in depth and you are going to be amazed. And chances are there's going to be things he mentions that you didn't know. Even if you think you know their menu, there's so many new things they've added. They're especially working on things for late night bar menu because the bar is open until 2 a.m. So there's just a lot of cool things. I don't really want to mention them because... I want you to hear it from Chris. It's definitely a location that if you're in the Fort Worth area, you can go multiple times a week, have so many different options. And if you didn't know, they made the Texas Monthly Top 50. They're number 10 on the list. They're spectacular. And they're such good guys. And they're, and they're just working hard trying to put out good product. So I can't thank them enough for taking the time. I know you're really going to enjoy this. And you need to make Panther City Barbecue a stop on your barbecue trip when you head in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com. I'm at Kevin's Barbecue Joints on all the social media. But in the end, stay safe and visit your local barbecue joint. Good morning, guys. How are you doing today? Good morning. Doing great. Like I mentioned off air, we've it was about three years ago that we spoke. What was it like finding it out about the top 10 and about the Texas Monthly Top 50? I think for the most part, you have your head down just working so hard every day just to try to put out the best product you can. And so when something like that comes about, get word that you made the top 10. It's surreal. It's, it's a shock. I mean... It's both ways. You put in the work, uh, you work hard every single day, but then when that hits you, you're like, oh, wow. You know, just to think about the company that you're in, you know, everybody else in our industry that we look up to and yeah. have followed for so long, it's just an honor to be recognized like that. And when we talked, Fort Worth Barbecue was just starting to grow, really. Right. Yeah, it was, it was very young. And there's been so many in the last, you know, two to three years that have popped up and that, and that are doing big things right now. So it was still very fresh at the time. Yeah, and it's nice, too, to have it that Fort Worth is a destination now. Right, for sure. Yeah, yeah. People are coming from all over doing barbecue crawls. You know, you guys taught me something that I didn't know. I didn't realize what Panther City means. And can you explain what Panther City means to people that might not know? Sure. Yeah, so Panther uh, City is a moniker uh, for Fort Worth that goes back to the late 1800s. Back before the railroads came through town, it was really just a sleepy little town. Once the railroads were built through town, it really blew up. The nickname came from a couple of lawyers that came over to Dallas for court and said it's such a sleepy town they saw a panther asleep on the courthouse steps and so uh you know once the town started to flourish the locals kind of took that took that as a badge of honor and nicknamed it panther city and said you know we'll show you guys the packing houses are coming to town the cattle drive the railroads and everything so it, it just blew up from there and that still exists are they is there do they still have i think i remember talking to homer or something do they have cattle mm -hmm. every week that comes through the town or, or something yeah or they uh there's a cattle drive daily i believe they do it twice a day through the stockyard they actually have some cowboys that drive cattle through for a tourist attraction through the <laughs> stockyards twice a day it's still really a big draw uh, for people that come out of town you know people ask us hey do you guys hang at the stockyards i'm like not, not really but <laughs> <laughs> when's but, the last uh, time you guys have been to the stockyards you know actually it has it really hasn't been that long because lately in the past year or two it's really grown they, they've got some real nice concert venues there now uh, as fort Worth's growing a lot of uh, bigger artists are coming through and even playing in the stockyards so it's really growing and changing now coming up with the times and there's a, a fort worth art scene too right aren't there a lot of galleries and there are yeah, the, the, the uh, Modern Arts Museum and everything here in Fort Worth, uh, Amy Carter Museum. There's a lot to do here in Fort Worth. I, I just wanted to kind of lay the land. And then could you guys speak to what your place is like now? Yeah, so now we've, uh, since the last time we spoke, I think we just had our outdoor kitchen and covered patio pavilion. Yeah. Uh, we have a few tables on our, our upper patio that were uncovered. And so just recently we've uh, redone all that, put some... Uh, some turf grass in the upper patio so you're not walking in dirt anymore that looks but nice we've got a new awning cover in the stage area in front of our smokehouse uh we've expanded our smokehouse even more and then we actually took over the uh the old bar that was next to us republic street bar built a new kitchen onto that so we we've actually moved operations inside and so our old kitchen right now is all raw meat prep and sausage making so ah, so smart. our masters took over the outdoor kitchen and uh we move service to the inside. Have you changed the menu at all or since? I know that, did you guys always have the elotes? I think you had that when I talked to you guys. Yeah, we started doing that back in our, our trailer days. Yeah. Uh, 
but it's become one of our most popular menu items now. But uh, we have expanded the menu somewhat. We do burgers daily, brisket smash burgers daily. Those look uh, uh, just with the times right now. We've done some cheaper menu options. We bought the the stuffed baked potatoes on the menu, things like that. Doing brisket chili and things like that. Trying to do it more daily, some cheaper options for our customers. And you guys are closed on Mondays and Tuesdays. So you're open Wednesday through Sunday. Do you have the breakfast only on Friday, Saturday, or is that? We're just doing tacos, breakfast tacos, just Fridays right now. Oh, just Fridays, okay. Yeah, we haven't bought that back on full time yet. We'll see if we get there, but just lunches are so busy right now that we're kind of concentrating on that. So if pe- so, the so for Friday, do people come before 11 then for those, or? Right, so Fridays, 7 to 9, we do breakfast tacos, and then we start uh, lunch at 10.30 on Fridays, 10.30 to 4. Are people, a lot of people come in to get, grab those to go for work? Is that kind of? Yes. Yeah, pretty much. We, uh, we make them fresh that morning. We pre-roll them and load them in the warmer that morning. So they're coming and grabbing, you know, five, six, 10, 15 at a time. You know, if they're late for work, they're grabbing 20 so they can give them to the boss. So yeah, they're coming through and just kind of grabbing them, but we do open the dining room. So if they want to stay and get a free cup of coffee, we'll put some coffee out there and let them sit in there and hang out. Especially on cold days, that would be a nice way to start your Friday and then get ready for the weekend once work is done. That's a... That's a yeah. cool option to, to to have. What's it like with the bar now? And was that was that bar a popular bar before? Or because I don't, I uh, heard the name it sounds kind of familiar for some reason. Yeah, Republic Street Bar was a somewhat of a dive bar. It really didn't get going until about nine or ten p.m. Uh, so before that, any draw inside the bar were, were people come to eat barbecue. But now it stays busy pretty much all day long because they stay busy through lunch, through a late lunch, say 4 or 5 p.m., and then that leads right into to the dinner crowd, people getting off work for happy hour. So it stays pretty busy now. Is that bar a bar bar for you guys? It is a bar, yes. We actually purchased the bar business out, so we actually own the bar as well now. So does that uh, have different cool. hours then? Then The bar actually stays open until 2 a.m., seven okay. days a week. Right now, we're not doing dinner service. We are planning to, to uh, roll in dinner service and then roll out a couple of late night menu options as well. Just working on staffing right now. Right now, it's really hard to find people that want yeah, to yeah. As soon as we get that in place, we'll actually be extending our hours. People can. So, so it is kind of connected though, whereas you can go and eat can you grab your food and then take it to the bar or how, how is that? Yes. Yeah. It's all one. So you actually, as soon as you enter the building, you get in line, order your food. We actually have food runners that will bring the food out to you. But when you uh, come out of the line, it leads right to the bar service. So you have to walk in front of the bar. So you can go ahead and order your drinks there, beer, uh, wine, liquor, full cocktail menu and everything. So how so cool it's is that? Hangout. And it's also actually, did you guys re- redesign it? It looks beautiful. Yes, we did. Uh, yeah, because before, like I said, it was just a dive bar. It was just cinder block, cinder block and concrete. So we actually did some upgrades inside, hung some TVs inside, did some sound sheetrock up in there, put some nice neons up. It's just it's just really a comfortable spot to hang out. In. And also for games, right? Too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because, you know, we love our sports around here. So it's perfect to watch Cowboys or TCU. Uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Cowboys, right? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you go to a, a Cowboy game recently? Uh, yeah, well, actually, uh, this past weekend, uh, went to D.C., went out to D.C. for Cowboys Commanders. That didn't turn out too well. But... No, it didn't. But how was the experience, though, in general? Was that a fun cause, like, oh, going yeah, off to a yeah. different stadium? And it's that... Yeah, it's always fun. We try to get away at least once a year to go to a visiting stadium just to go, you know, for the experience. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a that's a great idea. That was like I've always had a dream of doing that for either for football or for baseball. I think that would be fun to see all the different venues because they're all different and you know, there's just some are hist some have amazing history, but now that the ones like SoFi, I haven't been to that. That looks crazy out here. Right, right. Yeah, it's it, it's pretty cool because actually you can go out of town, watch watch a game at an opposing team stadium, fly get a hotel and get a rental car for about the same price as Cowboys Stadium. Isn't that crazy? That's that amazing. Crazy. <laughs> Do you talk to the, I wanted to make sure that we definitely covered the classes, the barbecue U. Is that yep. how it's, is that sold out yet or we still have time to? Uh, we do those monthly. So we are sold out through February. Uh, okay. We just released the follow, the next three months, March, April, and May. Uh, we just released them this week. So there are still spots available. We do small classes, 15 seat classes. That way we can have them every month. Uh, that way people keep the interest and we're not packing in 100 people at one time. But that helps us keep them affordable as well. It helps us give a, a, enough attention to each student so we're not speaking to a large crowd. And then we can do some you know, one-on-one talks with the people in that class. 
So we bring them in. We go through everything A to Z. They also get fed lunch, get a nice little swag bag. And then, you know, we have a little hangout afterwards if they want to hang out and ask uh, questions that are off topic from the class. Are you going over all the proteins? Uh, we do brisket, ribs, and then we do a third protein that rotates every month. So it may be turkey. It may be pork belly burn ins. It may be beef ribs. It just really varies. And how much is it? $200 for the seat. That's very affordable for what you're get, what you're getting. That's amazing. Yeah, it's a it's a four hour long class, but it's a pretty intuitive class. We go through everything. We pull the curtains back and show them everything that we do. We actually uh, spend a lot of time in the smokehouse, so they'll see briskets that are coming off for the following day service. They'll actually get to see that, feel it. They'll actually get to feel what it's supposed to feel like when it comes off, as opposed to just reading it. That's important. Very important. Yeah, because that's what it really is all about: is the feel. It's not about sticking a a temperature gauge in and figuring out the correct temp. It's right because that's what you guys had to you know had to learn is the feel right 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 and that's that's the whole point of our class is kind of just giving them a, a jump start on hey you know we we had to go through the hard way of reading it trying it failing at it failing at it failing at it so we want to take that frustration out just so that people can enjoy smoking food yeah uh, because it's expensive for one and it can discourage you if you fail a couple of times you might not do it we want people to do it we want people to get into it and, and have a passion for it yeah and then also too i I would think, and this is something that just popped into my head, is that once they see the process, I think people then start to realize why you charge the prices that you charge, why you, you know, why people sell out. I think that they they might know, but I think that once you take a class like that, you start to realize what it takes to do what you do and to do it consistently. And it's crazy. Yeah, for sure. I remember reading, and I think we might have discussed it. You guys did an homage to Haim, right? With the, the burn ends, is that still is that what it was? Yeah, we do. Uh, we uh, yeah. we did burn ends from the beginning in our trailer days. Yeah, uh, even before that, when we were doing pop ups. But we wanted to change it up a little bit, and we uh, actually did the. That's when we started the pork belly burn in popper. Mm-hmm. So we just you know mixed it with a with a jalapeno popper, which is something we've always made. I think a lot of people make those, you know, tailgates or whatever. But we threw it on the jalapeno and cream cheese and wrapped that in bacon because, we, you know, we figured what's what's better than a piece of bacon but wrapped inside another piece of bacon. Yeah, bacon on bacon. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is great. What are your guys' favorite things to get at your restaurant now? And has that changed uh, over the – Yeah, I think I think some of our more popular items now are our taco menu, uh, really our Flacco's Tacos. It, it's just a nickname for Flacco, who's, a, who's Ernie's uh, brother. Yeah. Uh, he's he was our first griddle guy, so he he would get on the griddle and knock out our tacos. But it's just a fried taco with uh, asadero cheese on the inside and the outside of the taco. We do it with a uh, brisket or barbacoa, cilantro, and onion, and it's just a nice uh, crispy little taco. A lot of flavor. Is that one of your favorite things to get right now? Yeah, I think so. I think that's one of my favorite items that I can eat anytime. Uh, if someone came in, would you what would you recommend the ideal platter for somebody? Or would you? Uh, say- the ideal <laughs> platter actually actually we put that together. Uh, for the people, especially for large groups that come through. Uh, we have a platter that's called the Echo and Southside, made in Southside. That comes with a pound of brisket, a pound of ribs, a pound of sausage. It comes with a large family size brisket elote, and it comes with the Flacos tacos. It poppers, comes with burrito, some of our jalapeno burrito. poppers, and it comes with the Flaco Dia, which is a quesadilla just named after Flaco, <laughs> and uh, a couple of large sides. So you're going to get a little taste of your traditional Texas barbecue, a little bit of our Tex-Mex spin as well. Ah, uh, I just, that sounds, that's ideal. Does, do you guys sell a lot of those? We do, we do. And that actually feeds uh, 10 to 12 people. Wow. So groups come in and well, they'll order one, two or three of those platters and, and, and sit here and just go at it. Because of the, bar, you have indoor and outdoor seating, correct? We do, yeah. Yeah, we have, we have indoor seating for about 60 people. We have outdoor seating for about another uh, 120, 130 people. And that's nice. And especially, I know it's cold, like you guys are dressed, obviously, for the cold, and people can see right. that. But once it hits the, the Texas summers or the late spring, tech, it gets hot. So you have air conditioning now in the bar, in that 60 seat area. We do, yeah. Full air conditioning, so the line runs that's... inside, you know, unless it's just a super long line, it'll run outside. But then outside, too, we have the covered area, the patio with fans as well out there to keep people cool down. And then uh, we've got umbrellas on our uncovered patio. For the line-wise, is it... Does it go pretty quick? Like, is it uh, people? Would yeah, it goes pretty quick. We now have uh, two cashier stations, whereas opposed to before in the outside building, we only had one. So, so we kind of pump that second line, just depending how long the line is. We'll open up that second register area, move the line pretty quick. So you can expect from our walking in the door to our register with a full line, less than thirty minutes on that line. That's great. So we move it. 
pretty quick, pretty quick. And then with food runners as well, uh, the style that we serve, since we're not market style and we don't have to walk the people across the line, it, it goes pretty quick. I've never heard anybody say, oh, I waited too long at Panther City. So that's, <laughs> I was, that was just curious. And then you're, you said you refer to your smokehouse being bigger. Did you, how many pits do you guys have now? Right. We've got five pits now. We have 2,000 gallons and three 500 gallons. Who made all those pits? Uh, those are Moberg. They're all Moberg. Yep. Ah, that's a, so 2,000 gallon and then three 500s. Yep. We are doing a lot more specials now, especially owning the bar now. We have a lot of special events that we'll post. Uh, I think next Saturday, the 21st, we're having a fajita night. That's a pre-sale, oh. pre-sale event. So you can actually go and get a fajitas for two. We bring a DJ in. It, it turns into a pretty cool event. Oh, that's cool. That's from 7 to 9 p.m. on the 21st. But we rotate those throughout the year. We've got steak nights coming up. Uh, we do all kinds of music, bingo, karaoke at night with the bar. And then we're going to be rolling in a night menu with that as well with our uh, elotes and chopped sandwiches and brisket smash burgers. That's smart. So now is that something you said pre-order? Is that pre-order online? It, it is online. So at panthercitybarbecue.com, you can go on there and uh, there's a link to purchase tickets for our fajita night. That's awesome. We try to roll things in, in like that because we have the building. We have to pay rent for twenty four seven, so we might as well try to be open. I like that. I like that because I've 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 heard that from actually a few smart business people that have said, you know, we pay rent every day and we pay electricity every day. Like it's not something right. And our goal is to you know mix in like I said the late night menu because it's just not feasible to roll the full barbecue menu out that late. Quality is number one. You know, finding the right people to cook that barbecue and to maintain that quality is key. So that's why we kind of stop that around the, the typical time, which is a late lunch. And then we'll go into smaller menu items or, the, you know, that play off of smoked meats. Well, if you guys are closed for the barbecue on Mondays and Tuesdays, you'll still do the, the late night. Eventually, you'll do the late night menus at the right. bar. Eventually, right? we do we will do the late night. You know, Mondays and Tuesdays are service industry typically. So we'll do a, like a service industry menu, something smaller menu like that that we can offer to people coming in. How are you guys feeling? Is it, do you feel stressed? Are you feeling good about this? Or No, we feel good about it. I think, uh, you know, we... We, we let it drag us along. We don't we don't bite off more than we can chew. So we just, you know, do it in increments so we can do it right. You know, it's been a slow process. We don't force it because the number one thing we do want to take care of is our team. So we don't want to force them into yeah. doing too much right now. We don't want to stress anybody out, you know, because this is fun. It's still fun for us and we want to keep it fun. You definitely uh, seem like you're a good spirit. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a, it's a Friday. We're ready for a big crowd today. But you got to make it fun. You know, we got into this because we love doing it. We want to keep loving it. So it's like, you know, we don't want to turn it into stress. We don't want, it doesn't feel like work right now. Mm-hmm. You know, and there's always that. There's behind the scenes. There's the paperwork. Of there's course. The payroll, there's the taxes. That's part of it. But, you know, we'll take that. So yeah. uh, so right now we can just keep making it fun. Keep keep it interesting. Keep it new. Keep Keep something for the people to come out and enjoy is our main focus. Desserts wise, is that do you guys make your own desserts or are there somebody's making your desserts? No, we make our desserts in house. It's a it's a really small dessert. We've got three items. We have your traditional banana pudding, we've got a nutter butter cheesecake pudding, and then we've got the smoked pecan bread pudding. Ah, uh, that nut the nutter butter has the nutter butters on it, right? Isn't that the one I've right. seen? Right, yeah. It's got a it's got the cookie inside the pudding. It's got one topped off, and then it's got the crumbles over. It. Really rich. It's, yeah, I don't know if it's good for you, but it, it's good to eat. <laughs> No, it's really good. And I think, no, it's, I don't think it's good. It's, it's, you know, what's funny, what's funny is I, I, I'm starting to like think that everything that I eat is good for me. Like I'm not eating like crazy amounts, but I'm trying to like convince myself. And I think maybe that helps you maybe a little bit. I don't know if it, you can't try. Like, I always think like, oh, it's, there's vitamins in this, I guess somewhere. Right. Well, peanut butter is a healthy snack, right? Yeah. yeah some I, sometimes I'll, yeah, sometimes late at night, I'll have a spoonful of peanut butter. Like it seriously, it gets, it gets, it keeps you going, but it's also right. nutter butters are something people, they're from their childhood and people right. probably haven't had those in so long. So that must be yeah. a fun reaction for people. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it, it is one of our more popular dessert items. And Ernie, did I did I pull you into something that you were <laughs> interested in? So he doesn't talk on camera, but off camera, his mind is always turning on new menu items. So he actually talked me into last week. My my background when I was 19, 18, 19, 20 years old, I worked at pizza restaurants. So he's like, when we used to do the food truck, we would buy pizzas, buy uh, take and bake pizzas and add our smoked meats on top. So he's like, hey, that was always a popular item. Why don't we bring it back, but make them fresh? We'll make everything in-house, make our own pizza, make our own dough, make our own sauce. Uh, So we actually rolled out a personal pan-sized pizza last week as a test for some of our employees and customers, and it was a huge hit. So we're actually trying to roll that out this weekend. Ah, that's Uh, cool. Okay. So we're talking brisket pizzas, uh, pork belly, uh, tri-tip chimichurri pizza. Uh, We're going to do all kinds. So it's it's something just to have fun. 
Oh, that's awesome. And also, too, that's a great bar thing, too. Absolutely. Yeah, per- it works perfect with the bar. And that's part of the thought process is, uh, you know, to use some of those meats that we have and especially to use any leftover trimmings on that for our smoked meats. But actually making it a quality pizza and doing it all in-house mm-hmm. as opposed to partying with a pizza joint just because I have a background in that. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, that's a smart idea. Can you go over your, your complete menu just really quick so people know, like sides and proteins? Yeah. Yeah. So proteins, we do, uh, of course, all your traditional meats, brisket, full pork, pork spare ribs, pork belly burn ins, uh, turkey breast. We do beef ribs on occasion. Uh, that's usually a special. Pastrami. On the uh, we do pastrami, house made pastrami as well on special. We also do uh, brisket guisada. We also do barbacoa. On our sides, we do. Uh, uh, spicy smoked mac and cheese. We do collard greens. We do two types of potato salad. We do a dill pot- uh, potato salad and a twice baked potato salad. Uh, we do our cream corn, spicy vinegar slaw. We've got our uh, traditional street tacos, Brioles. so you can get those brisket, pulled pork, or the uh, barbacoa. Uh, we do barracho beans. I'm sorry, I missed that on the sides. Uh, we do the <laughs> quesadillas. You can just get a plain or you can get it with any of our smoked meats on it. We do our burritos that are wrapped up, made crunchy like that. And you can get anything inside that. One of the most popular is the brisket guisada in the burrito. Oh. Uh, we do brisket chili. We do the uh, double brisket smash burgers daily, which we take all our trimming, of course, grind that up, mix it with a little bit of ground chuck and then make uh, smash burgers. And then, of course, we've got the desserts, banana pudding, nut or butter cheesecake pudding, and the smoked pecan bread pudding. Uh, we are adding the pizzas. Hopefully, we'll roll that out this weekend. And that may be a once or twice a week special. I don't know that we can do that daily. Two house-made sausages. We have the jalapeno cheese and the beef garlic sausage. Yeah, and then, of course, our brisket elotes. And uh, our brisket elotes is a very popular dish. And then, mention the stuffed baked potatoes. But you can pretty much pick anything on our menu and we'll make it. Uh, that's one thing we have on the bottom of our menu is if you don't see it, ask. We can pretty much come up with it in the kitchen. Oh, that's great to know. It seems like you guys, what a menu. That is, that's a that's a pretty extensive menu. And and you know, you've always had the Tex-Mex, but it's very, it's nice that it's a really good blend. Because you can get the Central Texas style barbecue right. from you guys, but the Tex-Mex side is even more detailed. And with the, can you explain, because we kept saying a lotus, a lotus, a lotus. Mm-hmm. People might not know what that is. Yeah, so that it, it's a play on street corn. It looks it's typically a street corn, typically on the cob. It, it's either got some kind of cream or mayo on it with a chili powder. People put all different kinds of things yeah. on it, but it depends how you want to dress it up. Ours is a play off of that based on our cream corn dish. So we actually spice that up. We'll top it with our brisket, cilantro, queso fresco, a hot sauce, and garnish it with a lime and jalapeno. So the flavors just mix really well. Uh, but that smokiness on that brisket and the cream cheese just mixes really well with that corn. Are people, um, are people mostly like mixing it? Like trying to get a, right. Yeah. They mix it up. They mix it up really good in that bowl so they can get some brisket in every bite, but it's a good hefty portion. Uh, it's a 16 ounce serving, but uh, once it's all said and done, it's pretty much a meal in itself. <laughs> yes, it is. It's definitely. And it actually, and it shoots, it looks really beautiful. And photography wise, I, like I, you know, you can see every angle. I think I've taken like screenshots from you guys for different things of every angle of that. It looks, it just looks great. It's, it's fun to. Very like. popular. It's, it's a great, uh, <laughs> it's a great dish for eating out on the patio. It's also great festival food. We do it at a lot of festivals, so it's easy to walk around with, easy to eat. And I knew you had a lot going on, but that you do, you have a lot, lot going on uh, for the bar wise because people this will end it with kind of with this. But do you have like being a full bar? Are there things that you're that you have more specific? Like, do you guys have like extensive bourbon and tequila menu? We we do. We really tried to grow it lately. Uh, my wife actually manages the bar. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, I told her I don't want to manage the bar. I have no interest in it. <laughs> but she's work. really be working with some people to to bring in some higher end bourbons and tequilas and things like that. Uh, really working on a custom drink menu. So we've got some custom drinks here, some uh, in house in-house cocktails and we try to do a lot of local as well we've got some really good distilleries and breweries around town for sure and we're all about panther city we're all about fort war so we really try to support our local neighbors well that's something too that people can come and get like a local beer or a local right. yeah, or like a local spirit that's that's awesome well thank you guys so much and i'm sorry i didn't get a chance to see you when you visited i think it was two years ago or was it yeah i think what we were out there for is it was this, the past summer. this past summer yeah Oh, was <laughs> time is just like so like I have no idea of time. Okay, so the, it was just oh for the or oh, you were here for heritage, right? Was it? Yeah, we for, were there for heritage. Yeah. Hopefully, you guys will be back for heritage. Maybe. Yeah, or... if he invites us again, we'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> and also, too, they'll have their oceanside place open, so that'll make right. it. 
right? Yeah, excited yeah. to go. Yeah, 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 that's really cool. Well, no, but next, but hopefully the next time that I see you, because things are starting to get better for my mom and things. So hopefully I'll get a chance to come out and visit you guys in person. And it sounds like what you guys have created, you can go visit you twice a week, three times. There's so many different options that you guys have. It's yeah. not something where you can't you can't go through the menu in one day. It's no, no, definitely not. Yeah, for sure. You can come three times in a week and still, you know get something different, get a different flair, get a different feel for everything. Like I said, whether it's traditional or Tex-Mex or a burger, you can come have a, a smash burger and, uh, you know, something totally different. And like I said, with the pizzas rolling out now, and that's one reason we did the pizza too is because there's always one person when you go in a group that wants always. pizza. Yeah, if yeah. you have five people, one of them wants pizza every time. Now you can bring your group and please everybody. Yeah, so. or you can bring a kid like that. Exactly right. We can make a cheese pizza. Yeah, <laughs> or get them to have brisket, have them have like some meat. Like it's a it's yeah. a great thing. I think that that's a cool option. And then, am I am I silly? Like you can you can't go to you can't go directly to the bar and order food, or can you? You can, you can. So so we're still working that out. We actually are just combining POS systems now, so we can roll that out. And you know, if you're by yourself or one or two people and can find room at the bar, you can just go up there and order. Okay, so that's on the that's there's there's some things coming up. Like it's keep paying right. attention to your social media. Absolutely, yeah. Things change constantly around here. Uh, we try not to confuse people, but we're always rolling out something new just to kind of stay current with the times and, and yeah. make sure we're taking care of the local craft as well. Excellent. Did you see when you guys got listed? Did you see a bump of people that maybe didn't know? You guys existed is that something that happened there, there there were yeah and that that happens every day i think uh you know once the list came out then uh, uh, other media picks up as well i think True. we were on hulu with the barber quest uh special on hulu yeah yeah uh we did the day tripper with chet gardner here local show in texas in fact we had an influx of people this week that just said they re-ran that special on the day tripper and so we we just got killed on Wednesday, and that's what it was. People were saying, "Hey, we just saw you on Day Tripper last night." That's so I think it, that it, happens it, for people with like diners driving to the dives. Like that'll re-air, and then all of a sudden, right. like, why are all these people? Here? Right? Yeah, we're like, it's a Wednesday. Where do they come from? So that's always good. And we did the uh, Guinness Book of World Record event with Texas Monthly. Yeah. Oh, and, can you go over that? I was so curious. What was that? Yeah. So it was pretty cool. They they had an idea to break the uh, longest barbecue marathon world record which was held by somebody in italy uh and really? i use the term barbecue loosely it was really a grilling session okay but you had to stand at your grill constantly you get a five minute break every hour or you can thank that time but the record was uh somewhere around 40 hours straight uh without taking a break so they came to us and said asked if we wanted to partner to to break that attempt uh <laughs> or to break that record because yeah. they knew our background in competition and working full-time where we would stay up all weekend and do that yeah. anyways we're like yeah we'll take a shot at it and uh actually pulled it off and broke the world record how many hours did you do uh was 40, it about 40 41 hours we wanted to keep going but they kind of cut us off at that point they're like that's enough <laughs> so what were you making for that thing uh we made fajitas burgers what else tablitas, tablitas uh, and then what all is. kinds of veggies but they donated it all to local first responders and shelters so that's so great. all the food was monitored and recorded and they would donate it out so it was pretty cool because it helped the community so can you see that on texas monthly on their barbecue club or is that uh... i believe so yeah there, there's a couple of uh segments on there video okay segments on there. and what was it you said tablitas what's the uh tablita so it's the the flanking short ribs be short ribs like cut long ways yeah i didn't know yeah. it was called that okay wait though no, with barbacoa do you guys do barbacoa like american style or do you do it it, yeah, it's American style. It's just the, the beef cheek, smoked beef cheeks right okay. now that we smoke in the pit. Yeah, because because yeah. the because what barbacoa traditionally is with goat is that or well you can do goat, you can do cow, you can do it, but it, it it's, it's head. It's... Of, like the whole head. It's the head. You mix in the tongue, the cheek, everything. Right. You're now. not so, doing it that. No, no, just I mean with pit space and things like that, and then also I don't know if a lot of people yeah, that are like... ready for all that if they know there's tongue and head in there. I'm not sure. I mean, if yeah. they ate it, they would love it. Trust me. But, uh, oh, without a doubt. I know. The first time <laughs> I had Lengua tacos, I was like, I was nervous, but I'm like, oh my God, they're so, and I'm like, oh, what am I missing? Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent food. Yeah. That's cool. Well, the, uh, thank you guys so much. I'm so happy for your success. And I'm glad that we're, look, it's so cool that we're talking three years later and you're growing. That's a big deal for a lot of restaurants. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, we work at it hard every day, but I, yeah, going through the pandemic and, and everything with the, the economy and the 
inflation and prices of the food it's crazy that we're still here but you know it's, it helps that we're having fun doing it yeah else, yeah definitely or else we wouldn't have made it and also now like you know you got eggs that you got to worry like it's so funny how there's like there's yeah, always something that's yeah but we're coming out with a new credit app for breakfast tacos because eggs are so high so we'll have to have people fill out a credit app before we can serve them breakfast yeah. <laughs> that is very important that's so sad <laughs> Do you guys make your own coffee by now? Like, do you have your own Panther City coffee? Uh, I don't oh, want to no. say too much, but uh, there may be something coming soon. Ah, that was a nice. Okay, that's a little <laughs> true. After you drank that, I'm thinking, like, they're just entre- <laughs> they're entrepreneurs. Uh, and that yeah. little hint of a smile from Ernie, I finally there, got him. Like, <laughs> there's, so- there's something in the works. <laughs> Excellent. All right, well, stay tuned. Well, awesome. You guys are so great. You guys have a great day. Great day, too, Kevin. You All as well. Great. Good to talk to you. Good to see you. All right, take care. See you.